Hi, my name is Polly Romine. I am a grant analyst at the Utah Office for Victims of Crime, and I am going to walk through how to do an amendment for state funding. Uh, this is new to state funding. In the past, we have had people just email us their amendment requests. Please do not do that anymore. If you email us your amendment request, we will ask you to put it through the system. Um, if you have had a grant with UOBC in the past for VOCA or VARA or SAS, this is the same process. And um, hopefully this seems familiar to you. So I am logged in as a subgrantee. This is my grant. Um, if you need to do a name change only amendment or a point of contact change only amendment, you do not need the amendment ledger, but the amendment ledger is going to be here in the file section of your grant if you need to do a dollar amount change. So again, do not do the amendment ledger if it is a name change only or a point of contact only amendment. I'm going to go to the amendment tab. I'm going to hit new. And this box is going to pop up. I am going to type some justification for my amendment. I'm going to explain what's going on, what I need, why I need it. If it's a name change only, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to spell correctly maybe justification. Whew. I don't know. I'm going to get it wrong, partly because I am not close enough to the computer to see the tiny writing. I'll use that as the excuse, right? So I'm going to type in here um, why I am asking for the amendment and why uh, the, oh, justification. Um, this is the, like, uh, where I'm going to say, we're losing funding or, oh gosh, my, my brain is going blank a little bit right now, but um, give us the reason, <laughs> give us the reason of, of why you were asking for an amendment. So-and-so left, uh, we, we filled the position or we've split the position. Uh, the amendment purpose is like, it's a, a, a name contact, point of contact change, or uh, the purpose is we're moving funding from this position to this position. Uh, so list that out <laughs> for us. So you will select a budget change if you are doing a name change on your budget because you're still editing the budget. If you're doing a contact change, then you would select contact. So the grant manager is, I don't know, stepping down and going to a new position in the agency or they've left. Um, you can do just contact. Program plan changes are super rare. You should be emailing with your uh, grant analyst if you need to do a program plan change. Um, those, again, super rare. So um, if you are doing a new, uh, like a new point of contact change, make sure you have been emailing your grant analyst as well, because the new POC needs to be put into the system before you can select them here. So if you are doing a contact change and you don't find the person that you are looking for here, if you start typing in their name and they are not showing up, then you need to make sure you email with your grant analyst and they get that name, email, phone number in the system so that they are available for you to choose. Um, if you are doing a budget change, tell us in this box right here what you are changing. Um, personnel and fringe can be name change only. Travel and training can be name change only as well. All right. So when I feel good about what I've got in there, I'm going to hit save. Okay. Um, you can see that I have actually two amendments here. One is approved and one is new. So you'll want to make sure that 
you are working with the correct amendment. This sometimes does not feel very user friendly. If you get to this screen and you're like, I have no idea what to do, is my amendment submitted? It is not, the status is new. You are going to go over to this number and you're gonna click on it to open up your amendment so that you can submit it. You can sub see submit for approval up here. That is a step that people miss because again, it doesn't feel very user friendly. So with name change only amendments, you still do have to submit some, some documentation. If you're doing a personnel change, you do have to submit a um, record of qualifications for your new person. Usually it's easiest to submit a resume. You would just upload files, choose the resume and attach it. Or if you are doing a name change only training, you would like to put a different training into your budget or another training into your budget, you will upload an agenda or other backup documentation to show that that training is allowable. And um, anyway, upload that documentation, you'll hit the upload button, select it, you know, and then save it. Um, if you are doing a dollar amount change, then you would have downloaded your amendment ledger, which is in the file section of your grant. Let's see if I can back button. Okay, good. File section. The amendment ledger is here. You can download it and save it to your computer. Save it somewhere where you can edit it because you do have to attach it. So we're going to, I just downloaded my ledger. We're going to pretend that I am filling it out now. I'm going to enable editing to make it so that I can edit that. So this ledger will be blank when you open it. You can use the ledger in the file section of your grant multiple times in a year. Um, also keep in mind that UOVC has done some work to mitigate the need for multiple amendments. We have combined personnel and fringe together, travel training together, and we've done some other changes. Uh, you do not have to do wage increase amendments. We have tried to, again, do things so that you do not have to submit so many amendments. It is work for you. It is also work for us. So a large number of amendments is also a risk factor. So there is that as well. I am going to fill in the position. I'm going to pretend that I'm doing that now with you. I will put in the total agency salary. I is in the subgrantee. You guys will put in the total agency salary. Total agency salary is the total amount that is paid for this position for the whole year from any funding source for, for federal, state, local, grants, any other funding that is going to go towards this position. You will put this the grant funded portion, the state funded grant portion right here in this box. So the grant is only funding 61%, 61.54% of this, this position's salary. Total agency fringe, same as total agency salary, total agency fringe, is the total amount of fringe that the agency expects to pay for this position for the whole grant year, regardless of funding source, federal, state, local, other grants, unsecured funds, whatever your agency is using to pay for this position. Um, this percentage is important. It works with these numbers to be able to create some of these numbers for the total fringe amount. Um, your total allowable fringe amount auto populates. This is because we don't want you to accidentally ask for more fringe than is state grant funded. Um, you can bill up to this allowable amount of fringe, but you cannot bill more. This amount I've put in less, I only put in 9,000. That's because I wanted to come on, I wanted to come at or under my current 
dollar amount for my grant, which is $61,000. I'm going to make notes down here in the box. I'm going to put in exactly what changed and why. Um, also, these, these totals populate. And personnel and fringe is the most complicated box on here. You'll see the other boxes are just notes and a dollar amount. Tell us what changed and why, put in the dollar amount. One thing about the amended amendment ledger is even though it's blank, it will be very beneficial to you and others to put in all the dollar amounts, even if that cat budget category is not changing because that way it will be able to show you and us that the dollar amount is at or below. I mean, we don't want you to be below. We want you to spend the money that you got awarded. So I'll say <laughs> that the dollar amount is at the amount that it should be. Please do not ask for more money in an amendment than you expect your grant analyst expects. If you ask for more money, then what is expected, then you will get an email, you'll get denied the amendment um, or partially denied the amendment. Anyway, um, just make sure you're not asking for more than you're supposed to or the grant analyst expects or you expect. So um, all these boxes are the same again. Tell us why, tell us what changed, dollar amount. And my my total dollar amounts will auto populate and this matches my current approved budget dollar amount. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and then I am going to upload it. To my files so my grant analyst can see it. You can see, oh, good. All right, when I'm feeling good about my ledger and all of the, the boxes here, if you want, you can always reopen them up and adjust them or edit them. When I'm feeling good about all of that, I'm going to hit submit and submit for approval. I'm going to get a notification that the amendment was submitted for approval. Um, you will not get an email that the that the amendment was submitted. I will show you though, that in your main page, when you log in under amendments, this says submitted. That's how you can check whether your amendment has been submitted without having to email your grant analyst. All right, when the grant analyst gets your amendment, please give us a few couple few working business days. Um, it does, because we do have to have multiple approvers, different people approve your amendments. It does take a little bit of time. Uh, we can move fast, but if you need us to move fast, then you do have to be in communication with your grant analyst. Your grant analyst will let you know when your amendment has been decided. Uh, they will email you, let you know it's been approved, let you know that the budget has been updated, that the billing ledger has been updated. They will email you if they have questions or concerns. So um, let me just make sure that that is all of my notes for you. All right, it looks like it is. Okay, most important, get to your amendments right here, main page, once you log in, make sure you're working on the correct grant. Oh, one other thing is once you've submitted an amendment, you won't be able to submit payments. It is important that if you have to submit payments, do your amendment first, do your amendment um, where you leave yourself enough time, to be able to submit that payment on time and get that processed as well. So, all right, that is all I have for you. Good luck.